Hello, everybody. Talmar Anderson from Boss Actions. And today we're going to rock your bossitude. I am so excited to continue on this series of conversations we're having with business owners turned CEOs about the bosses in their lives and how they've stepped into their boss role. I'm so excited to introduce to you one of my favorite, like, seriously, I want to be like him when I grow up, people, <laughs> Pat Miller. Hey, Pat. Talmar, great to see you, friend. How are you? <laughs> I'm fabulous. And I'm so excited to be speaking with you. So if you give me a minute, I'm going to talk about your, your uh, fabulous bio, and then we'll get back into it. The small business owner support system is broken. A record number of people left their jobs last year to open their own small businesses. When they went out looking for help, what did they find? They found networking events full of sharks slapping business cards and high price coaching programs disguised as business support. Pat Miller, founder of the Idea Collective Small Business Incubator and the Idea Collective Retreat, brings entrepreneurs together to engage in real support, ideation, and resource sharing. In the business world, he produces over 40 hours of live content each month on topics like sales, marketing, operations, and mindset. In order to support his members' lifestyle, they offer positivity, abundance, and a place to celebrate success, which I love, 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 and feel emotionally supported throughout the journey. He understands a small business lifestyle and journey because he is on it too. That's great. Yeah, let's do it. All right. All right. So let's start talking about the boss situation, the whole boss life that we've got going. But it goes deeper than that. We weren't always bosses, Pat. So tell me about the best boss you ever had. There are two bosses that come to mind. Mm -hmm. One, and I'm going to share a little bit about both, if that's okay. Oh, it's great. I love it. I had one boss early on in my career who did a lot of encouraging and projecting about where she thought I could end up. And mm. she was very encouraging and pushed me out of my comfort zone to um, see what might be possible and really helped me understand there was more for me than what even I saw was possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful to Deb. Shout out to Deb. She was Deb. the best boss back in the day. Later in my career, I had a completely different style of boss who served me in a completely different style of way. Um, Tom was a real, um, I don't want to say taskmaster. He was very stringent with his specifications. Okay. But he wasn't stringent with his specifications because he wanted to be annoying. He wanted to have me raise my game and learned along the way. Like, hey, what you gave me is good, but I expect this. Here's the gap between what you gave me and what I demand. Mm. So I would raise my game and improve my performance. I and love that. When you have a boss like that, sometimes you don't recognize that they're actually trying to help you. Until right? later on, right? Until later on, and then you <laughs> appreciate what you had. So I had a boss that helped me cast a big vision and I had a boss that helped me raise my performance to a higher level. So both of them, I'm grateful to both of them for those reasons. I love that. And it sounds like Tom's secret sauce was that he was really clear in what success looked like. And he was careful about articulating that to you in a way that would let you understand, oh, I could do this and I could go that. That clarity and how he communicated, it sounds like it really set you up. Yeah, it really did set me up and it really reminded me to look at best in class and what needs to be done to get to best in class. Mm -hmm. Good enough was not good enough. We had to be excellent in everything from time cards to emails to the database. I mean, we had to be excellent at all times. And, you know, I'll say it was a little exhausting sometimes, but it made me question where I was mailing it in, in some Ooh. portions of my business. Uh, and it really has served me well in the long run. I love this. I love, I love hearing that um, we can still be, you know, bosses asking for accountability and stepping into that role 
and still be regarded as a great boss. I think people get nervous that we're in a situation where we're kind of hoping that people are going to stick around forever and that it's going to work out. And if I, if I'm really, really nice, maybe they'll figure out how to do it. So I think that this example will really help bosses understand we can put out the clarity. We can ask people to step up. And oftentimes we get more respect and definitely more, you know, deliverable from those people. So I love that. So thanks for sharing that part. Can I add one quick thing? The difference between being clear and demanding performance mm. and being a boss that people love, the difference between those two things is demanding performance and being willing to teach how you get to the next level. So Tom that. is very demanding, but he would say, here's how you missed the mark and what you can do to get there as opposed to that's not good enough, do it again. That was the difference. Yeah. And that's, and that, again, that's the clarity of communication, right? If I want better, what the heck does better mean, right? Better is a very big, who knows what word, right? Yeah. If I, if I, what I'm meaning to say is I expect two more sales out of this, or I expect us to not call clients honey and sugar stuff and things like that, right? If we don't want to use those terms, we can say instead, just say, Mr. Miller, thank you very much, right? It sounds simple, but given the example and stepping, taking the time, again, that goes to accessibility, but, but making sure that you're there to help them understand how to get to that success. I, I absolutely love it and could talk about this all day. So maybe we will sometime, but now we're going to turn to the next question. So you're the boss now, Pat. There's no question about that. And what I want to know is what do you wish you had known before you stepped into the boss role? Hmm. I made some big mistakes as a boss. And one of the biggest mistakes that I made was I thought everyone was motivated by the things that I was motivated by. Good one. Oh my gosh. We literally, everyone listening, everyone has been there. Tell us more. So I was a young boss. I uh, ascended to a leadership role very early in my career. I was 20 three, four, and I was leading radio stations. So we had some folks on staff who had been around. They, they, they weren't new. And I distinctly remember, this is embarrassing to say out loud. So promise oh, me, you'll, okay. delete, promise. you'll delete this episode. Of, I mean, of seriously, course, Shh, I might we won't say it. anything. Yeah, yeah. Nobody listen. Everybody be quiet. Don't listen to this. <laughs> we're Mom, not listening. We're not listening. La, 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 la. <laughs> I was 24, three. We just moved to a new station. And we were going into a ratings period, which is the Super Bowl of radio. Mm -hmm. And I told the team, hey, everybody, if we achieve this outrageous ratings goal, keg party on me. <laughs> now, seriously, at the time, <laughs> I was 24. and That sounded amazing party, to you. That sounds amazing. The morning show. Two completely grown up grown ups with kids and families and lives hadn't been to a keg party in probably 20 years. Yeah. They looked at me like, What are you doing? And oh. I, couldn't, I couldn't understand why it didn't motivate them. I'm like, This is the greatest thing ever. And it didn't dawn on me until many years later, you moron, that is not how you go about motivating people. So that's the big one. I was encouraging and trying to motivate people with the things that would motivate me rather than knowing what would motivate them. And, and it's hard, right? You know, the bigger your team gets, they all have different motivations. And so being able to touch on all the different needs of all your team definitely can be challenging. But yes, this is a very clear moment that I want everybody to share. And trust me, we have literally all been there where we find out like it's like a big door in our face. You mean you don't care about the things I care about specifically what? in all moments of my life, right? <laughs> um, so, you know, the story I always tell people is that, yes, if you're sitting across doing your one-to-one -one with your team member and they say that they have to cook food for their sick cat because their sick cat can't eat store-bought food and they have to make chicken and rice for them every night and they want to go on, Yes, you have to care about that. It's only fair to care about what they care about if you're asking them to care about the business, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a great moment. I really appreciate you being vulnerable and admitting, especially as a young boss, we've all been there. When we first are starting out in that wonderful journey that we're still all getting better at, <laughs> let's, yes. let's be clear, we're all still working on that. It can be very challenging. So thank you. So the last question, this is an, hopefully an easier one. Um, tell me, you know, what do you love about being a boss right now with the team that you have? I got a great team. 
I got a team that I don't deserve, to be honest. Mm. They work so hard on all the things that we're building. Uh, so I'm grateful for them. Uh, so what do I love about leading them? Um, you know, I love that they're dedicated to the mission, not the work. Mm, so that's the idea, good. You know, well, the idea collective is a place where small business owners come to realize that they're not alone. And we're trying to help people build a dream, not a job. And I've got people on my team that know that this is my dream. So they help me build it in a way that's much more meaningful than yes, boss, I sent the email or yes, I checked the box or balanced the spreadsheet or whatever the task might be. Mm -hmm. What we're doing for our members, I perceive as a gift to the members and they know that helping me do what I'm doing at scale, which is the mission of what we're doing is what's meaningful to me. So that. they go above and beyond checking the box. They go and serve the mission and the bigger picture vision. And it's uh, really delightful. And that's why I don't deserve them. I don't deserve people that are as invested in the dream as I am. So I feel very grateful for them. Well, and, and I appreciate that gratitude. And I know that team and I know your membership because I'm a proud member myself, but I will tell you the don't deserve, I don't think is quite right. You are a great leader. You've got great vision. You've got great insight and you're giving them the tools that they need to be successful at that job. So they can feel that sense of achievement and contribution and collaboration that you're cultivating on your team. So I would tell you to step into that boss role a little bit and be like, you know what? It's, it's not so bad over here because <laughs> we're working together. And that's what I see in your team. You guys are working together and without you, they would not be able to do the things they do as well as the other way around. No, I sense? think you're right. Yeah, no, you're okay. right on that. And I appreciate Okay, I'm just going to ask just... you to step into that a little bit. But right. so I, you know, one of the things that we barely touched on, but I want to make sure of, normally at this point, I ask how listeners are to find you, but I think I just want to talk a little bit about the Idea Collective Retreat, which I might be in the room for coming uh, up here, yeah. November 10th through the 12th. Tell us a little more. It's going to be great. This is it the in-person family reunion for your small business family <laughs> that you didn't know you needed. Mm. Uh, if you are out there trying to build your dream all by yourself, you're putting entrepreneurship on hard mode. And this community of solopreneurs is working with one another and growing together every day in our online community. Once per year, we gather for the Idea Collective Retreat, two and a half days uh, awesome keynote speakers, mm. laughing until you hurt, planning mm. 2023, realizing that you don't have to grow it alone. Mm. It is a special time and a special place. And this is our second year and it's going to be amazing. Smallbizretreat.com can do a much better job explaining what it is than I can, but it is the highlight of the year. And there's no debate about that because Talmar is going to be in the house. So, <laughs> you know, Thank you so awesome. much. Well, Regardless, here's the real skinny, everybody. The number of cards, uh, cards, tickets that are left out there can be counted on my fingers and toes. Yeah, we're down to the nubbins. So if you think that you need to be surrounded by these kinds of people and you think that this is just what you need, I cannot encourage you enough. Run, don't walk to get those tickets because they are going, going, gone. The link will be in the post for sure. Pat, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time and energy. Anytime I get Tom our time, I'm happy about. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, we're excited to be here and we're here for you because we know, boss, you're working hard to build that culture, build that business, serve your clients and do it all with a little bit of fun. So remember, you can do this. There are great bosses out there. You can step into it. It's time to rock your bossitude. Boss on!